Good morning and welcome to worship on this sixth Sunday of Easter at Muhlenberg Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you're here today, wherever you are, as we continue to be the body of Christ in this season of physical distancing. We hope that you'll take this opportunity to participate fully in worship today, saying hello to folks in the comments and taking a moment to like and share this service, inviting others to join in. You can find a link to our bulletin where you can follow along with today's liturgy in the description of this post, and you can find a link to the chimes, our weekly announcements, in the description as well. I'd like to highlight a couple of announcements this morning. First, we are gathering on Sunday mornings from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. via Zoom for a time of faith formation, pastoral care, and fellowship. There's something for everybody during this time with specialized breakout rooms for classes, care, fellowship, and even a children's story time before we all come back together for a full community coffee hour during these Sunday morning Zoom gatherings. You can find the link in the chimes or on Muhlenberg's social media sites and website. As also, we are really excited for a new opportunity beginning this week to expand our team here at Muhlenberg. We are beginning the process of hiring a full-time Minister of Communication to better support the Ministry of Muhlenberg in telling God's story and our congregation's story together. If you're interested in this position or would like more information about the process, stay tuned to the chimes and to our website in the weeks to come. And lastly, we know that not everyone has the internet capabilities that support gathering digitally like this each week. So we're excited that this Sunday we'll be launching the Wellstream phone-in service. The number is in the chimes, and we encourage you to pass this along to folks that you know who haven't been able to connect online, so that they may call in to either hear a full worship service or a sermon each week. We are so glad that you're here with us today as we continue to form this community even in these trying times. And at this time, as we begin our worship, I'd like to invite all of our children to gather up close around the camera for a children's message with Pastor Lauren. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you are doing well today. I want to take a minute to talk about something called a psalm. Have you heard of a psalm before? It is kind of like a poem from the Bible that we often sing in worship. And that's because it's like a songbook from the Bible, the book of Psalms. And so each week we have a psalm in our worship that we sing or we chant. Today, the psalm that we will sing or hear is Psalm 66. And it starts with these words. It says, bless our God, you peoples, let the song of praise be heard. Now, how many of you at some point this week have been home and your mom or your dad or your grandma or whoever you're hanging out with is like, okay, I need you to be quiet now because I have to get on this phone call for work, right? Or something like that. And you're told to be quiet. Well, right now, this says, let the sound of praise be heard. So I want us to all give a big hooray God. Okay, ready? One, two, three, hooray God. Let the sound of praise be heard. Now this song goes on to say, come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. So the person singing the song is not just saying, yay, God, the person saying, here, come, and I'll tell you more about all the amazing, awesome things that God has done. So this week, I want you to get a piece of paper and draw a picture or make a list um, telling of what God has done. Maybe you are thankful for the sunshine and the rain, which makes beautiful flowers grow. Maybe you are thankful for people in your family who love you so much and you say, yay, God, thank you for this love that I experience. Whatever it is, the things that God has done, make a list or draw a picture, have your parents take a picture of it and send it to me. We'll put it up on Facebook so that you can let the sound of praise be heard. Hooray for all the things that God has done for us. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for all of the awesome, amazing things that you do. 
Help us to see those this week and to shout for joy at these things and to remember that you are with us always. Thank you, God. May we share these wonderful things with other people this week. Amen. I'm here at the South River in my home of Waynesboro, Virginia, and I hope that as the weather improves this week and as it's safe for you to do so, that you'll take an opportunity to go outside and enjoy nature and give thanks for the waters of life that bring life to our communities. As we give thanks for these waters of life, we can remember the waters of life through which God gives us new life as we give thanks today for the gift of baptism. If it's not safe for you to leave your home and visit a water source in your community, Take an opportunity to look at pictures of a trip you've taken or call up a friend and reminisce about a time that you visited water. 
Let us, in the midst of God's good creation, give thanks for the gift of baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Just as God's work of creation never ends, so the gifts received in baptism are renewed every day. Let us give thanks together for the life given in baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life, for water to bathe in, water to drink, for waters to play in, and waters that inspire wonder, for water that gives life to our planet. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place, for water from our tap, for rain, for the Chesapeake Bay, for the Shenandoah, the North, and the South Rivers. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place. We give you thanks for your salvation through water, for delivering Noah and his family through the floodwaters, for leading your people Israel through the sea into freedom, for preserving your prophet Elijah through the time of drought, for guiding your people across the Jordan into a new land, for quenching the Samaritan woman's thirst with living water. We give you thanks for your salvation through water. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized, for all who gather in this community, for godparents and baptismal sponsors, for children and grandchildren, for our siblings in Christ, whom we have never seen, but to whom we are bound. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized. We give you thanks for life in Christ through your Holy Spirit, for our entry into Jesus' death through these waters, for our new birth into a life of freedom and service, for our calling to be your people, sent out for the life of the world. We give you thanks, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever, Amen. Today our worship begins with our gathering hymn, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the 17th chapter. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made one nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them in the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, for he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice. By the man he has appointed, he has given proof of this to all men by raising him 
from the dead. The word of the Lord. found in 1 Peter. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water, and this water symbolizes that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel. 
Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I read this week about the 19th century philosopher, Arthur Schopenhauer, who drew a very stark portrait of the fate of the human race. He compared us to a bunch of porcupines huddling together on a cold winter's night. He said, the colder it gets outside, the more we huddle together for warmth, but the closer we get to one another, the more we hurt each other with our quills. And in the lonely night of the Earth's winter, eventually we begin to drift apart and wander out on our own and freeze to death in our loneliness. What a powerfully sad image. And the saddest thing about it is that all too often, it's all too true. We draw together for comfort. We prick each other and then we pull away into loneliness in everything from international politics to backyard bickering, over and over again, we see this sad scenario come true. I know six or eight weeks ago, it seemed like my newsfeed was filled with these positive, heartwarming stories of folks lining up to cheer on medical workers and stories of folks spending their whole days sewing masks to give away to people in need. People were checking in on their neighbors and emailing me, asking what more they could do to help the community. Now I've had to avoid Facebook and limit my time reading the news because it feels like lately we're more prone to hurting one another with our quills. I see fights over when to open up, how to open up, whether to open up, fights pitting individual freedom against our responsibility to the wider community, as though it's an either or proposition and we only get to have one, so we better get in our camps and resist the other. People who I love and care about are verbally attacking each other and those quill pricks hurt. I sometimes start to think that grumpy old Schopenhauer was right. But then we hear these words from Jesus. The Father will give you an advocate. The Spirit abides with you. Because I live, you will live. My Father loves. I will love. You love. Somehow Jesus has this way of breaking down our downward spiral of hate and destruction and calling us to a new cycle, a new relationship of love. Jesus stops the prickly poking and points us to a peaceful kingdom, a beloved community, a circle of hope and presence and promise. And we have to remember what was going on here in these words from Jesus. This section of John is part of Jesus' farewell discourse. He has just washed the disciples' feet and given them the commandment to love one another. And he has just foretold Judas's betrayal and Simon Peter's denial. He was trying to draw them together, 
but already those pricks of sin and evil were driving them apart. Things were intense when he started talking, telling them he wasn't going to be with them much longer. They must have been so confused and unsettled. They'd had this intimate experience of love and care and then the specter of betrayal and denial hovering over them all. How could they possibly understand what was about to happen to Jesus? What was about to happen to them? Or even why he was telling them these things now? But they'd soon find out that he was right. Everything was about to change. The way they shared their life of faith was about to be turned completely upside down and it would never be the same again. Jesus was not going to be together with them in the same way. After his crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension, he would not be there with them as he had been for the past three years. So Jesus says, listen, very soon we are not going to be physically present with one another. But don't worry. Just because we're not physically present with one another doesn't mean you have to do this thing alone. The Father will give you another advocate to be with you forever. It's interesting here because when Jesus talks about another advocate, there's actually two different words in Greek that mean another. There's the word alos, which means more of the same. And then there's heteros, which means more of another of a different kind. And the word here that Jesus uses is alos, another of the same kind. It's like if you're at a restaurant and the waitress comes up and says, would you like another iced tea? You know that she means another of the same kind, a, a refill, as opposed to her saying, would you like another drink? You know, a different one like Coke or Sprite. So the Greek word that's, that's used here to describe the advocate is alos, another of the same kind, which emphasizes that the spirit that God the Father is sending is the very spirit of Jesus, not a different one. Jesus, love and grace and healing and power and call to radical love and service and sacrifice will all still come to you through this advocate. I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus continues. Now back in those days, there were a number of traveling teachers and preachers and often when a teacher would leave town, the disciples without a master would be referred to as orphans. So Jesus is saying, I'm leaving, but you're not going to be without a master. I will still be your leader. And the idea of a group of disciples continuing to call themselves disciples to someone who had been crucified, that was unheard of. They would normally want to distance themselves from their former leader because he's gone now. But Jesus is saying, no, you will still be able to follow me through the advocate. So let's talk about this advocate, this spirit of truth that abides with them. Lutherans admittedly aren't the best at having a well-developed understanding of the Holy Spirit, but John gives us this beautiful image of the Spirit here. In Greek, the word is paraclete, not like paracletes, like my son's baseball shoes, and not parakeet, like the bird, right? Paraclete. In our translation, it's translated advocate, but it could also be translated as helper, encourager, counselor, comforter, or companion. And each of those words, each of those translations give us a slightly different facet of how John envisions the Spirit's work in our lives. And all of them are things that we probably would be quite open to having in our lives right now, right? Paraclete literally means to stand beside. So we use the word advocate, sort of a courtroom image of having someone up there with us to stand up for us. A counselor gives us advice. An encourager keeps us going. 
and a comforter. Well, that reminds me of the comforts, our ladies, so at church, that you can wrap yourself in and know that God is there with you. And then, of course, a companion means that we are not alone. No matter how prickly the other people in our lives are, or how distant we may be from them. And Jesus tells us that the paraclete abides with us, and indeed in us, drawing us into this circle of love between the Father and the Son and the Spirit that we get to be a part of. It doesn't necessarily protect us from the prickles of the world, does give us the assurance that the world's cold and prickly winter of loneliness and division is not ultimately what our life together is about. I find this to be incredibly helpful during this particular season of our lives when it feels like everything is changing in ways we can't fully understand yet, where we cannot be physically present with one another in the ways that we have been, when it feels like our whole way of doing faith together has been turned upside down. But just because we're not physically present with one another doesn't mean we have to go through this alone. What has kept us together through this time? It hasn't been Zoom or Facebook or YouTube as helpful as those technologies are. What keeps us connected is something deeper than any of our technology. We are still bound by love through this advocate, helper, encourager. God has been and will continue to be our companion through this time. Just as the disciples couldn't have imagined continuing to follow a crucified leader, it's hard for us to imagine still being the church if we aren't gathering together. And yet, here we are. That's exactly what we've been doing. We're obviously still trying to figure out how this all works and how we move forward to gathering again safely, which may be further down the road than any of us want it to be. But it took the disciples a long time to figure those things out too. In fact, we, as Jesus' disciples, are still trying to figure it out, right? But we can trust that because of Jesus, because of the gift of the Spirit, we can be drawn into relationship and community that's characterized by forgiveness and love and care for one another. Because Jesus lives, we will live also in this intimacy of being in God and God being in us. So as we continue through this time at home, if you start to feel discouraged or overwhelmed by the ways in which people hurt us and hurt each other with their quills, well, I invite you to defy Schopenhauer. Instead of withdrawing into cold loneliness, reach out to find the warmth of God's love there for you in a phone call to a friend or a note written to someone who lives alone. Reach out to find the warmth of God's love as you share a story of where you've seen God at work in the world, pointing out the Holy Spirit's movement in our midst. Reach out to find the warmth of God's love through a donation to Second Home or the free clinic or the food bank or another organization who is serving the most vulnerable among us. Reach out to feel the warmth of God's love through a time of prayer for all those who are trying to make tough decisions that impact others in this uncertain time. Reach out for a hug for that person that you're quarantining with and you are so, so tired of being around who you really do love. In all these things, we experience the keeping of Jesus' commandments as Jesus is revealed to us and in us and through us. This is a crazy time, but we are not alone. God is with us and God will love us forever. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's compassionate rule and enduring love, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Loving Jesus, today we were reminded of your promise not to leave us as orphans. During these times, we cling to this promise more than ever. We pray that your spirit remains strong within us so we can demonstrate that strength to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that your love for the world would be felt by all who live in it, that governments and leaders will turn to you for strength and guidance. We pray that all will recognize you are in control. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the beauty and hope of spring, for bluebirds, redbuds, daffodils, gentle rains, and the smell of fresh cut grass. Grant us as we work to save those things for those yet to be born. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we thank you for those whom we might take for granted. Store clerks, delivery persons, restaurant workers, first responders, and those who provide electricity, phones, and internet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we pray for all who suffer from disease and illness. We lift up all those in the medical field who work to relieve suffering, and who by their work give hope to affected families. We pray that you would protect them and grant them rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, O oh Lord, we remember those who have died and gone before us in the faith, and by whose names and witnesses we have come to know your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you at this time to once again be creative in your means of sharing Christ's peace with one another, either with those that are within your household or taking a moment to text someone that you know or writing down a list of those that you're going to call after our service today. You can also share peace with one another in the comments section of our online services this morning. At this time, we move forward into the offering portion of our service. While we're not gathering in person for worship, the church is certainly not closed. We continue to engage in Christ's mission to love and serve our neighbors here in our community, and we ask for your support in continuing that mission. You can go online to make your gifts at MuhlenbergLutheran.org slash give.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks for God's word. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Through your word, you speak new life into our lives, rolling away stones and ushering in a new way of resurrection life here and now. For your word of new life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you created the heavens and the earth. By your word, you saved the earth from the waters of the flood. By your word, you led the Israelites safely through the sea. By your word, you led your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. For your word of deliverance, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, your words and deeds have transformed death to resurrection life. Your word has brought us all, wherever we are, to stand at the entrance of the empty tomb and to walk with you into this Easter dawn. For your word of Easter life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that the alleluias we raise may be heard across all nations. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our worship concludes this morning with our sending hymn, Come, We That Love the Lord.
The blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We have been renewed at the wellspring of God's grace. Now, go in peace. We go to be open, authentic, relational, serving. Thanks be to God.